All right, guys, welcome back. As you can see, I'm back on Dead by Daylight. Haven't played this in months. But um, I have my dailies with um, survivors. I have two for survivors. One is for Leon. I have to rescue three people off the hook. The other is I need to sabotage four hooks. And I still have the um, tone that I need to cooperate and finish two generators. So... That's some survivor things I have to do. And I am so out of practice, I doubt I remember all the buttons. <laughs> and if I'm not mistaken, we are going against uh, Sadaka, the chick from the ring. Tell about it, TV, we are going against her. L1 AS run. Circle is to drop that. Okay, I should be able to get my first one down with Leon. Okay, now besides that... Where's she coming from? Okay. <laughs> Got that. We sabotage. Um. Dude, that was gonna happen. <laughs> ah, shoot. <laughs> I was so out of practice with this, but it's fine. I just remembered the buttons for this. <laughs> anyway. That's fine, I don't actually care that much. Don't really care if I win. See that work on generator, you're getting healed, that's fine, that's fine. Anyway. Damn, I haven't even started on generator. But recently they've come up with the new PlayStation Plus tiers and categories. And everybody has their opinion on it. 
because everybody viewed it as a. Why do I still hear her? Because everybody viewed it as a Game Pass uh, competitor. And I don't think that's what it's for. Because a Game Pass, the biggest pur purpose to get it is the day and date Xbox games. Oh, you did not do that. Wow. Wow. Anyway, the day and date Xbox game is the main reason to get Game Pass and PlayStation doesn't have it. PlayStation doesn't have it on either one of their three tiers. And uh, three tiers for the year. The highest tier is $30 cheaper. And all my podcasts had something to say about it. And I didn't agree with any of them. Well, I agreed that people weren't happy with it. <laughs> but they act like oh, it's not anything extra. Like they give you all the backwards compatible things that Xbox Game Pass gives you. And they also <clears throat> give you the discounts and whatnot. So they literally give you everything that Game Pass gives you except for the free exclusives day and date. And I'm about to die. Great. And the free exclusives is basically the only reason why anybody would get Game Pass. Wow, and then body camping. Wow. That's just great. Anyway, I'll finish this on the um, next go around. I'm gonna do two of them back to back. And I'm back. Now, as I was saying, <coughs> the only reason, and it's probably not the only reason, but the main reason why anybody got Game Pass was for the free day one games. And Sony didn't do that. And when they didn't do it, they tried to give a reason for why they didn't do it. And their reason is what got them in trouble with people. Come on! Fuck! Let's see, I remember why I could play this game. But if their reasoning was why they got them in um, trouble with gamers. Because it's like, oh, we don't want to put our exclusives on there because we feel like that that's how people know that our games are worth something. Or, you know, that's how our games have value and that's how we're going to keep playing. Because you sell your games for a price and that price inherently is value for everybody. I'm butchering what they said, but that's basically the gist. And I hate the... Oh, come on. Why is he right around me? Oh, but you hit her. Anyway. I hate that nobody can actually just talk normal, either in business or anything. Everybody got to toe the line, so to speak. And nobody will just say it like, hey, we make games people want to buy. We would lose money if we gave away our games for free. Microsoft can do it because nobody wants to buy their games. Like, without a doubt, their biggest franchise is the Halo franchise. That's without question, right? And Halo Infinite recently came out, and everybody was real excited about it for a while. And now, like, next to nobody's playing it. Want to know why that's significant because it's a big first party game the multiplayer they made completely and utterly free regardless of if you had game pass or not he's body camping
So you got it on Xbox and PC. And it's completely free and it's still losing players. Because the quality of the game isn't there like it used to be. Then on the other hand, they change the metrics of how they talk about their games so they can seem more successful than they are. Oh, come on. Anyway, they're like, they don't do sales anymore. They do player engagement and whatnot. Oh, and that is a way to mask poor sales. And then they um, wrap it up with, oh, these indie games get some more play because they're on Game Pass. And people take that and run with it. The fact is, if you give people something for free, they will try it. And they're like, well, we gave it for free, and then people spend more money on than they would. Like, I wouldn't have played Dead by Daylight if it wasn't free. And because I got it for free, I spent some money on it because I liked the game. So they're conflating people spending money on a free game with their service being worthwhile. You get free games with uh, PlayStation Plus. And you put money on it, so yes, even that way, you get value. Did I... Why were you... Anyway, this is just ridiculous. <sighs> anyway, there's value in the services. There's value in getting things for free. But the... The discourse around these things is what's unfair. Yeah, mammy. And the discourse has just turned to Game Pass is such a great thing because you get games for free. You get all the Xbox exclusives for free. And because you get them for free, it is inherently better than the new PlayStation tiers because you don't get all the PlayStation games for free. I remember when people were saying that gamers are entitled because they wanted all DLC to come free on the game. It's like, no, somebody had to make this so people should get paid for their work. And now it's like, mm, for a small fee, you should get every game for free. Like, the, the, the change has been quick and utterly startling to me. But this is an example I use when I talk to people. Like this year on PlayStation, you've had Ooh, gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> You've had uh, Horizon Zero Dawn and shoot, I can't think about all the games right now. And several other games for free on um well came out for PlayStation like Death Loop and all of those. If I wasn't running for my life, I could give you names, but it's like six games so far for free. Well, ah, exclusive this year. <laughs> and if PlayStation would just sell a game, uh, PlayStation Plus subscription, plus two of these games, they make more than they are with their highest new tier. And just the same can be said for Microsoft. So it's useless to try to compete with a service that loses a bigger company money just so people don't that don't want to play for games get them for free. You understand what I mean? 
Hey, but it's just me. That's how I think about the Sis series and whatnot. I'm gonna go ahead and um watch them play for a little bit so I can finish talking about this because I'm starting to ramble, and I hate that so much. But anyway. <coughs> 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 Game Pass is a good service for those who like the games, and PlayStation, I think it's just, yeah, it's just different PlayStation Plus tiers. It's a good service for people that want backwards compatibility. But people that like PlayStation games will still pay for PlayStation games as they always have. Now, my whole thing about paying for the games that you want, wait, Kirara hasn't even been touched yet? My thing about those is, oh, gotcha. <laughs> uh, Game Pass hasn't increased value for me because not only did I not want the Microsoft exclusives they've been at, I don't care about the new games that they added with their um, companies they bought. Like I haven't enjoyed a Bethesda game since Skyrim back in 2011. So that means that to me, I'm done with Call of Duty. That's all Activision makes. Done with it. I do want to play the new Diablo, but we'll see when that comes out. Avow did look good, but it was just a trailer with... It's like a trailer with the concept, so... I'm not sure what we're supposed to do with this. Then what else, what else, what else? That other game's like Grounded or something that looked interesting, but honestly, I wouldn't play them. Uh, like, um, everybody saw the Wukong, uh, Black Forest, or whatever it's called. It's supposed to be coming out on next gen from, um, China. Everybody saw that gameplay and like, oh, I want to play that. I recently found out there's a Wukong game already on PlayStation, but it's in, like, Ratchet and Clank style, if you know what I mean. I'm like, mm, I don't know if that's going to be nearly as impressive as the other one. You know what I mean? So... <laughs> Wait, is this the girl with the key? Are you the one with the key or is the other one with the key? <laughs> so two companies, very similar, are competing for extra money in a race to be like Netflix when a lot of people are canceling Netflix subscriptions. Wow. So you're just gonna go die? What is going on here? What is this? Oh, y'all are not on teams. Wow. But, I would just want some discourse from people that don't flatiate Microsoft for everything they've done lately. They don't say, oh, Game Pass is the greatest subscription ever made for gamers. Because, yeah, you get a lot of games for essentially free, but doesn't make it a good thing. Like, I don't know who the best anime subscription is because I don't like anime. And it's the same with Microsoft. Uh, and Sony for that matter. I don't want all their games. I'll buy the ones I want exclusive, but uh, It's just me rambling. I'll see y'all guys on the next one. Oh Wait a minute 150 not. Oh Oh, wait a minute. Oh, I got 19. What are 30,000? Oh, okay. Never mind. Fuck. I've done some good for the brotherhood. I'll see y'all later shit What's going on guys? Just sitting here still playing Dead by Daylight. I just recorded a gameplay and it's still on my mind. So I want to know, am I in the minority? Would people rather add more and more subscription services in their life to buy things a la carte? Like I remember when way back in the day, you have to go to a video store like Blockbuster or whatever your local equivalent was to rent. VHSs or DVDs 
to watch for the weekend and you or uh, a day or two and bring them back. This is before Redbox. And Redbox is literally the same thing. And it was I don't want to say it was an adventure, but it was something you carefully consider, like, mm, what movies do I want to see? And you would go get exactly the ones you wanted to see. If you weren't sure what you would want to see, you'd go like, oh, let me see the horror movies you have available. And oh, I know I like Jason, so I'll just go get Jason for a little while. Go get a couple of those, a couple of Michael Myers or something like that. And that way you got exactly what you wanted, you know, three to five for the weekend. You watch them that weekend, you took them back the following Monday or so. Was it somebody just right there? Anyway, you got what you wanted, you were done with it, and you took it back. That's the way we've been playing games for so long. Like, hey, I like shooting games. The new Call of Duty is out. I'm gonna put some. <laughs> I wasted a pallet. I'm gonna put some money down because I want to play the new Call of Duty. He's following me instead of the dude he chased over there towards me? That's so messed up. Yes, yeah, finish this together, finish this together. Ah! Oh, cheat. Anyway. <laughs> you know, I like the shooters, so I'm going to go ahead and get the latest Call of Duty. Now, that's how we would do it. We figure out what we want, then we go, and we get it. Then, Netflix came about, and I believe Netflix and... Uh, whatever Sony bought that I can't remember the name of that became PlayStation 9. So they were the first ones to like, hey, pay a subscription and you get access to this entire catalog. They're like, I think Steam does it, but Steam is a subscription and you can buy a la carte from being a part of the, um, from having a membership, you can buy what you want a la carte. And that's the way it always was. And then Netflix came about. And everybody flocked to Netflix because it's like, hey, here is a list of things. Oh, he is permanent in there now? Oh, no. Okay, thank you. Ooh. Anyway. It was like, oh, there's this entire catalog of thousands of hits. So there's a little something for everybody. You pay like $5 and you can see it all. Five dollars a month, I mean. And you can get it all. And everybody's like, oh man, that's great. This is way better than what we were doing before. Which was fine as long as there was one of them. Like, as long as it was just Netflix, that was fine. But people are in business and life in general, it's a copycat lead. Like, people see one thing that works, and they must copy it for themselves. If you may have success with something, I'm going to do it too, and I hope that I can move. Uh, whoop. Whoop. Uh, ah, I hate people that do that. Uh, 
Come on! Anyway, you've had success doing that. So I want success doing it too. And that's when you get your Hulus, your HBO goals or Maxes, your Stars, your CBSs, your Paramounts. I mean, now there's so many that some people are saying it'll just be easier to go back to buying a la carte or more specifically like we used to do, pirate everything. It's just be easier to go back to that instead of juggling all these subscriptions. I mean, I have a PlayStation Plus account and I was trying to play the demo for Babylon's Fall, but I couldn't do that without a Square Enix account. Ubisoft lost a whole bunch of money doing, um, what is it, the U-Pad, the U-Play, the U-Play account. I mean, Call of Duties are um, all tied together with an Activision account. Um, Borderlands, let's say um, you have an account with, who does Borderlands again? Forgot who does Borderlands, a Gearbox. There's a Gearbox account. So every publisher now, wants an account like you gotta have an account to do this there's epic steam stadia playstation xbox switch online Dang it! But with all these accounts, why is it still me? <sighs> with all these accounts, it's now starting to dilute it. And what everybody used to call when everybody was um, worried about the double A spaces and the indie games that were free and did 99 cents, it's a race to the bottom. People are trying to give you more and more and more for less. Which is fine, except for the fact that it's not sustainable. Because unless you're creating something new to give you more and more and more for less, somebody has to buy more and more and provide the more. So that's why you got Microsoft buying publishers, Sony buying developers, Tencent trying to acquire everything and everybody. And to give you all of that content, that we used to pay millions and billions for a year for, in the case of Microsoft, $180 a year. $180 is not sustainable. Like, Microsoft is losing money. The companies may be making the same amount of money, but Microsoft is losing money. They got enough money to lose, but everybody that's trying to race with it, it becomes just... How much money can I lose before you run out? It's like playing poker and bluffing your way through everything. <sighs> anyway, I personally think that is going to be bad for everybody because Microsoft is leading the charge and they haven't proven that they can buy a studio and improve them in any way. Look at Rare. I mean, Recore, I think, was their last um, new IP, and nobody even talks about that. <sighs> but, oh well, we'll see what the future holds.